Welcome to Beyond the Beacon with Bishop Kevin Sweeney, a podcast of the Diocese of Patterson in New Jersey. I'm Brian Hansberger, in for Jay Agnish, and I'm here with Bishop Kevin. How are you, Bishop? I'm doing good, Brian. How are you? Doing well, thanks. Happy Feast of St. Lucy. And with your spirit, uh, we pray for anyone that's uh, dealing with eye issues, right? As uh, And for the people of, uh, me too, <laughs> uh, the people of S- Sicily, certainly, and the diaspora, uh, Great love, uh, beautiful. We're going to talk a little bit about Hispanic ministry today, and we just celebrated the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe yesterday. And mm-hmm. uh, even at Mass today, the, the Gospel reading, Jesus saying, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavily burdened, I will refresh you. And you think of the love of the people of God for uh, for um, our Blessed Mother and for the saints. And uh, sometimes maybe those of us who grew up in uh, the United States in this time, in modern times, you know, and ed- education is a great gift, but we maybe don't re- recognize the, the, sometimes we can almost look down on it, um, the simple faith of people uh, who, who just have this incredible love, sometimes not much formal education, but they have this deep, deep faith. And uh, I think we see that in uh, the Italian immigrant community, the Irish immigrant, so many immigrant communities, and certainly um, in our uh, Hispanic brothers and sisters, and, and we see it on the Feast of Our Lady Guadalupe, as we'll talk about. So mm-hmm. um, so uh, there's a great love for Santa Lucia, I think, if I'm saying that right, and uh, in Sicily, and Syracuse, she's a pil- uh, patron of, uh, but not Syracuse, New York, I think Syracuse. And, not the origin. And so, right, right, yeah. <laughs> right. So, uh, but... Uh, yeah, um, beautiful, and uh, in these Advent days, uh, we we are also preparing to get ready to celebrate the birth of Jesus at Christmas. So, Amen, good stuff. amen. And we're going to pray, but we should introduce Maria Moncaliano, my friend oh. and co-worker. And we've been working together for, I don't know, five, five, between five and ten years probably. Yes, probably, probably between five and ten years. Yeah, yeah. our diocesan director of Hispanic ministry. So welcome, Maria. Thank you, Brian. Welcome, Maria. Good and to see you. we can start with the press. Sure, sure. I'm going to, even though today's St. Lucy, we're recording, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the celebration of Our Lady Guadalupe and Hispanic ministry. So I'm going to use the prayer uh, from Mass for uh, the Feast of Our Lady Guadalupe. So let us place ourselves in God's presence in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O God, Father of mercies, who placed your people under the singular protection of your Son's most holy mother, grant that all who invoke the Blessed Virgin of Guadalupe may seek with ever more lively faith the progress of peoples in the ways of justice and of peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our Lady of Guadalupe, pray, pray for us. Saint Juan Diego, pray, pray for us. Saint Lucy, pray, pray for, for us. In the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Bishop. So, there's a lot of exciting things going on in Hispanic ministry in the diocese. So we just it had sure some is. big events. Yep. Noche de las Felitas. Then yes. we had a big Our Lady of Guadalupe diocesan celebration. I think first time. For the first time. Uh, uh, For the first time. Uh, yeah. A diocesan. We've been celebrating Guadalupe. Of course. Uh, almost 500 years now, starting <laughs> in Mexico, but we can talk about that. But, right, uh, right. but yes, uh, uh, it was wonderful. Uh, we could talk about that and a few other things. Uh, w- one very exciting thing I think Maria's going to talk about today is, is the fifth encuentro and our role as a diocese uh, in, in that national process, too. Right, the Quinto right. Encuentro, right? Quinto right. Encuentro. And maybe uh, to say that uh, I being here at St. Paul's, if you notice the different studio, right, here in Madison, I still remember my first trip here to Madison. I may have mentioned it before, but uh, I, it was the uh, probably May of 2020, late April, early May of 2020, after I had gotten the call that I was being named bishop in the middle of the lockdown, and I had been connecting with some of the Dawson leaders and Father Paul, our vicar for evangelization, uh, had invited me to come out, and uh, I was want, wanted to learn some about evangelization and our Hispanic ministry. And I had the opportunity to meet Maria for the first time with Ivania, right? With Ivania, Ivania Vega, yes. who um, were working together at that time in faith yes. formation, right? And uh, so um, uh, we had a great meeting, and as I was learning, and uh, after being here for a number of months, uh, I thought it would be important that we would have a 
an office. Uh, the we've had Hispanic ministry, migrant ministry for a long time in the diocese, and mm-hmm. Bishop Saratelli, Bishop Rodimer before him, uh, certainly uh, made that outreach. And when uh, sisters and brothers came to us who were Spanish speaking, if uh, and in, in chance to mention coffee with Kupke, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Brian hosts that podcast with Monsignor Kupke, and I still remember reading in his book, Living Stones, The History of the Diocese, how Hispanic ministry was started here in the diocese by two priests from China, right? Uh, yes, two yes, priests right, from China, right, and, and I believe the first mass was in Our Lady of Fatima, Fatima in, in Passaic. In Passaic right, so uh, we, it's important that we know our history, and uh, so then um, I think the office of uh, Hispanic ministry was under... Um, the uh, multicultural office, right, of the <laughs> diocese and uh, uh, under the umbrella of the evangelization. I thought with the growing number of uh, Spanish-speaking brothers and sisters, um, it would be good to have an, o- an office in the diocese dedicated to Hispanic ministry. After that time, then we also now have a, a vicar, Father Duberne Villamizar, who's the vicar for Hispanic affairs. Uh, and so uh, it seemed like Maria would be the great person to and it, I've been very grateful uh, getting to know her and work with her and and the way that she's kind of step, that has stepped up and and taken leadership so maybe Maria can share a little bit about um, becoming the director of the office but also maybe some of your own history here in the diocese uh, leading up to that well let's start with the history I have been working for the diocese for 10 years but involved in Hispanic ministry for almost 27 years wow. And uh, even that I was... And originally you're from? uh, I'm from Colombia. Right. (laughs) And when did you come to the country? I came to the country in 1986. 86. And then 27 years? 27 years and been uh, serving my my parish, which uh, originally was San San Antonio Padua in Passaic. But uh, without being part of the staff in the diocese, I have a very good relationship with Ivania. And because of my involvement with the community, I was invited to participate in different uh, programs for the diocese to teach, to do reflections. And my main uh, connection with this office was through the Quinto Encuentro, that Mm -hmm. um, uh, I was inspired by the process and got involved in uh, in that uh, specific uh, project because I think it was something needed by the community and by the church. I think it's good to take a moment to mention the Quinto Encuentro for a couple of reasons. Uh, I think as we've been in the process of the synod on synodality, Mm -hmm. uh, our Hispanic brothers and sisters kind of had a head start we were right? ahead because of that yes. that's been a very synodal experience i forget now the um when the first encuentro was uh encuentro a beautiful spanish word for encounter, uh, encounter, encounter. right and uh um and and so uh a, a national meeting a national encounter the first one was in 1978 in 78 and uh every Same year pope john paul ii became yes. that's yeah. right yeah. that's right uh, and that, you know we call it the quinto encuentro because it's the encuentro number five and for many people that don't know what encuentro mean the encuentro is a process uh, it's a process of consultation and admission that is um it has a big important element which is the formation of the people that are engaged in the in the church to go out in mission to reach out to the people that are disconnected from the from the church mm-hmm. uh the um, the consultation process is not a survey. And this is very mm. important that we know because we use the same concept throughout the, the synodal process. It's not a survey. It's not an, uh, that you tell me your name, your address, and what are you doing. It's just connecting with people, having a real encounter. So um, it, it's, it's, it's something that uh, as, a, as, a, as a Christians... We should be doing always and I think to acknowledge the people, to see they, they exist, they, they need us, and to tell them, listen, I'm here, you can count on me and be a resource and be a channel of uh, showing them the love of Christ. So much sounds uh, so similar uh, to what Pope Francis has asked of us in that synodal experience, right? To go to peripheries, to listen, especially those whose voices are often not heard. Uh, and so, um, and it's not a survey. Uh, but also, I think uh, a similar um, uh, experience was, uh, I believe, with the Encuentro, it starts on the local level, right? Uh, yes, the, it the start, diocese yeah. and it, parishes participating and then leading to the national encounter, which was certainly similar to the uh, the Synod on Synodality. So um, we did that in the here yes, the diocese. Yes, the process starts uh, in the parishes and keep going up to the diocese 
then the region, and then the national, where is the main, main, big, and big, and the national encuentro. And uh, so when you celebrate an encuentro at the parish level, you um, express the needs, the pastoral needs of your parish, and then the diocese is uh, aware what's going on in the parishes. We do a report, and that report goes to the region encuentro, uh, which uh, is, 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 I think is worth it to mention that the region, Region 13, we belong to Region 13, we had the same issues, the same, because, we, because the, the region affect what happened in the pastoral. It's not the same thing, the pastoral here, than mm -hmm. in the south or in the and west. The, and the process leads to identifying pastoral priorities. Pastoral right? priorities, right, right. and then we go to the national encuentro to do basically 10 priorities at the national level, which are the same priorities reflected in the new pastoral plan. So in the diocese, referring to what you were saying before the creation of the office, we have five priorities at the, at the um, diocesan the level. level. And one of the priorities was mm -hmm. the people asked for the creation of an office mm -hmm. of Hispanic ministry, dedicated to Hispanic ministry, to be part of the structure. And I will take this opportunity to thank you for... Uh, for doing that, and especially for giving us a voice at the table, because I keep saying that to the priests and to everybody that I talk about this, is that uh, thanks to your vision, you gave us uh, a voice at the table. We participate in many conversations. We we are part of the decision making, which I, is something that never exists in the past. But um, that's why we are very grateful, and this is a great opportunity to say. Well, uh, Brian, I think, was taking, speaking about uh, your involvement in the diocese and working in evangelization. You've seen so how the, the Hispanic community has grown and, 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 uh, and developed over these years, right? Absolutely. And, and Maria's been there for, for much of it as well. But it's been very exciting. So I, I live in Morristown. And to see even what's been happening in my own town, my own community, it's very exciting. It's very fun. Uh, it's the Hispanic community that's growing there. It's like a breath of fresh air. It's fun. There's like a new economy even. It's, uh, it's, it's a real pleasure. And the parish is booming. Uh, uh, St. Margaret's, Margaret's, yes, yeah. yes. And um, uh, another community that's growing in the diocese is uh, the community in Sussex County, Father Johan yes. Serrano, right? Yes, uh, yes. And... Uh, uh, for a time, or uh, we had something called migrant ministry, mm -hmm. and I think there was a time when there was uh, literally uh, migrant workers that would come and, and return home, come for a time and work. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think there's still some of that uh, uh, kind of uh, community on the move in 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 Sussex, in other parts of the diocese. It, it's there's been more st stability. Mm -hmm. So we have some Hispanic parishes. We have some parishes that have mass in Spanish that have a, the, a, a smaller maybe Hispanic community that's mm -hmm. part of the and the goal is always that we're one parish right we're one church uh, but um, uh, Father Johan Serrano uh, now responsible for the um, the Spanish speaking community uh, and we say a prayer for Father Johan his dad just passed away and he's just gotten back from being with his family in Colombia and having the funeral of his dad mm -hmm. uh, Father Ruben um, Dario Castillo, uh, who had been serving in with uh, um, Father um, Raimundo in, yeah. in, in two parishes in Patterson, has been helping with the uh, mission in Sussex. And uh, I believe they had a mass last night for uh, the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe at Pope John uh, High School in Sussex. And mm -hmm. uh, But Father Serrano, um, along with Father Dubonet, Maria, Father Yonator Garcia, a few others, uh, said it would be great uh, that... Uh, our Lady of Guadalupe is certainly a feast for the Mexican community, but she's also the patroness of the Americas, and so many of our Spanish-speaking brothers and sisters have a devotion to our Blessed Mother under many titles, right? Uh, every country has oh, their yes. own, and some have two or three, but, uh, but Our Lady of Guadalupe, and I, again, I think also for the immigrant community, again, uh, you know, St. Patrick's Day, sometimes they say, became more of a celebration here in the United States than it was in Ireland, because it was an opportunity for the immigrant community. I think of... Uh, um, 
the the uh, the feast in New York City, the Italian feast. Uh, what is the? Uh, um, there's a big feast, oh uh, San Gennaro. San yeah. Gennaro, yeah. of course, right? Uh, so yeah. different. Uh, the beauty of our country with people coming to from they bring us there there and share that those cultural experiences. So mm-hmm. Our Lady of Guadalupe uh, is um, is such an important feast uh, for the Mexican community. Yes, for the immigrant community, it's part of our who we are as Catholics. And so, um, uh, but. Each parish that has a community would have their own celebration, especially on the night of the 11th and into the 12th. But uh, we wanted to have an opportunity to come together as a diocese. Uh, so we did that this past Saturday at, um, at, at St. Peter's. And I think you were both there, right? And uh, um, uh, maybe we can talk a little bit about how, how that went uh, this past Saturday. Um, I think it was a great experience uh, for all of us. Uh, that participated not only in the Latino community, but uh, the Anglo community. Mm-hmm. I think they were very excited to see uh, the energy, like you mentioned before. I don't know if it was uh, off record, but uh, <laughs> we were talking about that. Uh-huh. And, uh, and, I, and I hope that you share that story with us. I think it was a great experience, but I, I want to mention something very important, and it's the first diocesan celebration of Our Lady of Guadalupe. And, and the reason why I want to say that is because we received an invitation from uh, Pope Francis uh, to celebrate um, mm, mm, nine years, okay, um, do something special for the celebration of Our Lady of Guadalupe in preparation of the 500th anniversary right. mm-hmm. of what we call the Guadalupe event, which is the apparition of Our Lady of Guadalupe. And every year we should do something special. It doesn't need to be in December because... Uh, many things happen in December, but something dedicated to her and for the people in general, the community, to know um, the story uh, and the history behind that, the operations. That beautiful phrase that I learned, um, uh, no estoy aquí, quien es su madre. Am I not here yeah, who am your mother? your mother? When Juan Diego, after having met the, the Blessed Mother twice and as she asking him to go to the bishop and ask that he build a sanctuary and him asking for a sign. And then his uncle gets deathly sick and the uncle wanted to um, get a priest to go to confession to be anointed. And he sent Juan Diego, you know, they had to go a distance and uh, he had to cross the mountain where he had met her. Uh, mm-hmm. Many, I think, know the story, but uh, that third time he went, uh, he went a different way because he was concerned he if was he met her. her. <laughs> then, right? And there she yeah. was. And she said, Juanito, right? Uh, not Juanito, even Juan. Yeah. The, 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 yes, yes. Uh, 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 am I not here? I'm your mother. Your uncle's going to be okay. Mm. Now go pick some flowers and bring them to the fisher, yes. right? Uh, so I, um, I think it is important for us, uh, uh, you know, as a diocese and community, to keep in mind that, uh, that uh, you know, the celebration of Lady Guadalupe is not only for the Latinos. It's just our mother is uh, the right, start of right, the evangel- right, new evangelization. Right. Mm-hmm. And Pope uh, Francis, I think, coming from Argentina, knows yes. that experience for the Americas, right? Exactly. For the, all of the and, Americas. Um, you know, it's, um, I think it's going to we have a few years uh, ahead of us to do something important until uh, we celebrate the 500th anniversary in the year 2031. Mm-hmm. Brian, you had a, you brought your family to the Mass on Saturday. We were there right? on Saturday yes. for, at yeah. St. Peter the Apostle, and uh, I brought my three boys, <coughs> and uh, they, they just found it to be very fun, very exciting. So it was a different place, different people. It was bilingual. The music was, was very fun. So my boys, they, they just kind of focused on looking at all the different stringed Inst- instruments. Yes. I think there was a mandolin. Yes, yes, it was. Right, there right. was an electric guitar. Right. They're like, why is the electric... We, th- we were there very early. Mm-hmm. They were like, why is the electric guitar on the floor? Somebody should pick that up and play it. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and they were just mesmerized with the whole thing. The, the, the flags coming in, all the different countries represented. And I was mostly just answering questions for them, but that's the point. Right, right, right. right, uh, right. It, w- it was a wonderful experience for us. So. And Father Johan made that effort to, uh, again, not only the Spanish-speaking community, but but many communities and, and, and all, uh, as, as Pope Francis would say, told us, told us, told us that everybody mm-hmm. was invited to be part of the celebration. And so mm-hmm. we had a, a, a choir from the cathedral at St. John's who uh, led many of the songs in Spanish, but we also had a Filipino choir. And one of our Filipino priests, right, Father Cirillo, sang with them a, a Marian hymn after, after communion. I noticed Father Cirillo halfway through the song in the <laughs> choir. I'm like, oh, where did he get there? That's pretty cool. Right, yeah. right, right. So... Um, so yeah, it's just such a, a beautiful feast. I had the chance to be at um, 
Holy Trinity in Passaic, uh, Father Antonio Rodriguez, uh, they have a custom of a, a, a procession and a crowning of the image uh, on the Sunday, I think, before. So I was there this Sunday, and uh, Father Antonio was announcing the schedule for uh, the 11th and the 12th. I think they were starting around 6 with the rosary, then a Mass at 8, I think a Mass at midnight, uh, a Mass at 5 in the morning, and uh, I think a holy hour at 3 o'clock. Uh, the parish I had been in Brooklyn and many parishes, they, they remain open the whole night of the 11th, yes, right? Because, yes, because you know, uh, there is a custom for the, um, actually from Mexico, that uh, we have what is called uh, serenata, is to serenade. Mm. You serenade uh, someone that you love right, in the middle right, of the right, night. Right. So they, there is a tradition in Mexico where uh, the 11, uh, they serenade our Blessed Mother. And the famo famous uh, singers go there and mariachis and, mariachis right, and everything. Right, right, so that right. tradition was uh, has been uh, you know taken from um, uh, from the from uh, the, our community, and we serenade uh, our blessed mother. Las mañanitas. Las mañanitas, we call it, and the, all the parishes know that they had to book the mariachi now <laughs> because <laughs> next year is no mariachis right, available. Right, uh -huh. right, so right. in many parishes we had that the cathedral. My parish has the that are the 11 and it's, it's, it's a beautiful uh, something that we wait for and the beauty of our Catholic faith how it, it becomes part of a culture and received by a culture and uh, given a different flavor you know and uh, and and it's all out of love for the Blessed Mother and for our Lord and uh, and a response to to her visit right she mm -hmm. I've, it was this it struck me you know that we could we can say with with Elizabeth, uh, who am I that the mother of my right. Lord would come to me, right? And mm -hmm. she came to us here in the Americas through the Mexican people, but she came to all of the Americas. And, uh, and, and so we have those customs and they're developed by, uh, by um, uh, um, countries and, uh, and, and passed on in families from one generation to the next story is told. And so, Maria, you were mentioning uh, in Colombia, December 7th, right? Yes, every December 7th um, in, in in few countries in Latin America, we celebrate um, the Immaculate Conception Fest. Uh, uh, particularly in Colombia, we call it Noches de Velitas, which is the night of the little candles. And um, the tradition comes from, uh, I think, year 1850-something. I don't remember the exact uh, date, a uh, year, I'm sorry. But uh, it was uh, when Pope... Uh, Pius the nine, I believe, he proclaimed the dogma of the Immaculate oh, the Conception. Conception. Right. Yes, so yes. the the eve before December eight, people in St. Peter Square were waiting for the Pope to say it is officially a dogma of mm -hmm. the Immaculate Conception. Right, right, right. And the people has candles and torches and everything. So I think that tradition was uh, from Europe was moved to the Americas and Colombia really uh, preserved that tradition. It's a beautiful celebration in our country and we moved that here. Basically, I will I had to mention that Ivania Vega was the one that started this year. And I remember she always say it's my favorite event of the year because everybody you know, uh, participate, and you, Brian, has that experience that you participate in all Noches de Velitas when we were hosting that here. Uh, this part, uh, the, the past two years, we moved to the Holy Face Monastery in Clifton to give the opportunity to the people in the Passaic County to, you know, participate because of the distance. But uh, it, it's a beautiful experience and uh, has a lot of symbolism because uh, we, we have the candles uh, to show that we, our, our tradition say that we show with that light, which is Christ, we show the way that St. Joseph and our Blessed Mother, mm -hmm. when they walk through Bethlehem, Bethlehem right. that's yeah. one reason. And the other reason is that we uh, light a candle uh, for, for asking for a grace from our mother, which is peace, health, unity. So that's what is a tradition where if, even if you are not a religious person, you take part of that because it's part of our our, our need, you know, our spiritual need. So, mm -hmm. Noches de Velitas is a great event. And the m and hot chocolate, too, right? Oh, we have hot chocolates <laughs> and That's we have cookies. And it's always so cold, and that <laughs> hot chocolate <laughs> on your hands feels so good. The hot chocolate is the best part. <laughs> yeah, so and, the, and the marshmallows Mushroom, and everything right, else. Right. And, uh, and uh, I was thinking when, in my way here that for the past two years, uh, families 
mm-hmm. you know, families uh, got involved in this event, uh, uh, you know, for, for many reasons. They bring the kids. And so many families ask me, can I pray one, uh, you know, can I do a prayer? Can I do something? And, if, you know, even uh, the people that help to, to set up the, the, the place, because we place candles, almost 200 candles in there, in the, in the ground and all that. And they say, I want to be responsible for that. This past um, event was raining the whole day, and I was amazed to see how the volunteers were you know, helping and it, it's, not it's a to beautiful. Be denied, right? No, <laughs> absolutely not. And and that and that's the beauty of this. That became a, a family event, and I was so pleased to see my grandkids there. One also. one of the, my oh, right. favorite yes. parts of of uh, welcoming Hispanic people to this diocese over the years is the incredible volunteerism. So, mm-hmm. as an evangelization staff, uh, Joe knows this. We struggle helping Maria sometimes in her job because she always has so much help. <laughs> so right, the, right. there's always this v- right. volunteer army helping out. And that's, that's part of uh, the culture that, that's coming here that, right. that must be appreciated. We, uh, in parishes that have Guadalupe, uh, there's always that committee that's uh, going to be in the church uh, a few days before getting oh, the yes. image ready mm-hmm. and the, the, the flowers and, and decorating the church. And yes, and, and uh, for, for so many that's, um, uh, they're not necessarily doing it for you and I. They're doing it for mm-hmm. La Vida and they're doing That's it right. for the Blessed Mother. They're, they're, but they're happy to do what they can do for the church and for their, their parish community as well or their diocese. Yes, it's, it's wonderful to see. I, I think we're blessed with, that, uh, uh, with the volunteers, Brian, and I'm glad you mentioned that because, uh, like Bishop says, we take things like uh, they belong to us. We, we love what we do, and the people... They want to uh, be part of the events. That's what I keep in my mind always, the idea that we had to plan not for the people, with the people. I think, Together. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, mm-hmm. I think when you are inclusive in that sense, people, you empower the people. There are so many leaders and volunteers that want to have a role in the evangelization process, and we had to empower them to do that. that and one like way, synodality yeah, and, yes, and, exactly. And, and the segue because <laughs> uh, leadership training and education. Mm. Uh, so um, volunteer catechists, right? But catechists need training. So Maria, I know you've been involved in catechist training, but also um, leadership training and. Uh, the relationship that we've developed with St. Elizabeth's University, right? Uh, the certificate program, if you can talk a little bit about that. Yes, and I had to start saying that I am the result of one of those programs because I started at the, the pastoral certificate years ago. I don't want to say the year, but <laughs> it was many <laughs> years <couple>. ago. <laughs> and later on, I was inspired to go for my master in St. Elizabeth University also, mm-hmm. uh, thanks to the program that we have at the diocese. The diocese has... Uh, um, resources that is, is called Prepare the Way, which is for the formation of the uh, ladies, right? And I was, uh, you know, benefit from that. But uh, with San Elizabeth University for, I will say, maybe 15 years, I guess, uh, we have different certificates. But the one that we have right now for the past 10 years is what is called Certificate in Catholic Evangelization. And uh, we are grateful with the university as well as with the diocese because um, I keep promoting this and doing marketing for it. Inspire <laughs> people, please get involved. Uh, is that uh, the university gave us a very, very low fee for semester. We have four credits each semester. We paid a minimum amount of for that, and you know, because you you, you also manage the, the one with Seton Hall. And uh, the leaders... Uh, the people benefit from a, a very good, good uh, formation for also a minimum amount. I mean, parishes support them with, I believe, $65, and the students pay only 135 mm-hmm. And the reason why I mention in the, the, the amount is because it's a way to do marketing. It's easy and it's uh, something that, that people should take advantage. And the formation is... It's, it's an integral formation. It's not only theological. It's just to live the reality of the, of the church. And the beauty of, uh, of this program at the, the last semester is each student has to do a project based on the need 
of their parishes, mm. which is a project um, that is done together with the pastor. The pastor has to approve because that's the reason why the leader it should be, you know, working in the There's parish. There's nothing right? worse worse than forming a leader I separate know. from the parish and then the, the leader is telling the pastor what to do. Exactly. Work yeah, out. but you it know what? Works. We notice that and we what we do when we do the project is that we prepare like a, a contract. Mm -hmm, so the mm -hmm. student has to present the ideas to the pastor, the pastor sign, and hey, he has to help them to develop the project. And it's been very helpful because sometimes the pastors uh, they are so busy that they don't. They have no time to mm -hmm. dedicate to a specific. Uh, yeah, it's it's a true uh, need. It, it's a setup for co workmanship. Mm -hmm. So so lay people and priests working together towards a common goal is is a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, the relationships uh, within the church and the larger the local church, the larger church. Uh, St. Elizabeth's and Marie, Maria also mentioned uh, Seton Hall, mm -hmm. both the university and the seminary, uh, Immaculate Conception Seminary. Uh, so, Brian, your years here at St. Paul's and even Bishop Saratelli's vision of uh, creating St. Paul's as Center for New Evangelization, mm -hmm. uh, I'm thinking of diaconate, the training of our candidates for the diaconate and um, uh, marriage encounter and, uh, and our, the young adult uh, uh, community that celebrated Christmas uh, a little early uh, this past Friday. But it was you were with us. Yes, Thanks for being to. there. Yeah. Um, but maybe um, uh, some of the relationships both with uh, St. Elizabeth's and Seton Hall and how that helps us to do some of the educational work and formation work that's done here at St. Paul's? Well, I think we're spoiled. So, so I wonder how many dioceses in the United States has uh, like this situation where we have relationships with two different universities. And uh, when we think about what Jesus says, what, what, uh, Jesus defines evangelization in Matthew 28. He says, go. He says, make disciples. Uh, he says, baptize them. And then he says, teach them. So like that catechetical component to our faith is key in evangelization. Right. So we have the College of St. Elizabeth. They can't be more supportive in our Hispanic Certificate in Catholic Evangelization. Amazing. Dr. Gary Crosby, right, is the president now. Yes. And Dr. Yes. Santa Maria, Dr. I know, Santa is also Maria is, is, uh, oh, he's, We've had him here. He's mm -hmm. great. Um, so, so it's just, it's, it's wonderful to have that resource right down the street. And Seton Hall started there. Oh, that's right. Seton Hall started there. It was it was uh, McQuaid. Coffee with Cupkey. <laughs> it was McQuaid uh, and and uh, uh, Bishop Bailey who who started that school, and eventually they moved it to South Orange. So that's right. that's how right. I get involved. Right. We have the Immaculate Consumption Seminary at, Semin at at Seton Hall, and we have the English speaking certificate program. So these are rather small. If you think about it, we have these three year co cohorts, and there's only like twelve people in these cohorts. But we've been doing this. This is our fifth cohort. So now we have over 100 people in each language yes. who have this certificate, and they're all in the different parishes. We have 107 parishes last time I checked. And now it seems like we have an average of like one per parish per language, and that's going to continue to grow over time. And these are very well-prepared, equipped lay people prepared to work with pastors to help with the mission of teaching in evangelization yeah it's, it's a beautiful thing yeah it's a it's a blessing and again we're grateful to both of the universities uh, for their mm -hmm. their support their generosity uh saint elizabeth's has recently hosted uh our catechetical uh, convocation, convocation in spanish and our mm -hmm. our das and youth day youth, as well so uh, yeah. yeah we're very grateful uh, and now that uh you mentioned that as few uh dioceses that has that type of program now that I have the role at the regional level, I noticed that all my colleagues in the Hispanic ministry, uh, they keep asking me, how do, how do, how do we get in touch with uh, the university? What mm -hmm. is the curriculum that you use? How do we provide that type of formation? Because the quality of the formation to our leaders. Because uh, in many parishes and in many dioceses, we have programs, um, simple programs. And in, in a way that I say simple is not as... Is not important. It's just the basic programs, but mm -hmm. these type of uh, formation. Well, these are, these are accredited. Accredited, and and uh, that's mm -hmm. another thing that they receive formation without the benefit of having uh, credits, which mm -hmm. we yeah, told well, about. So, you know. so I did the research. We spent a lot of time on this. There's no one, no one else doing it. So yeah. our diocese is the, is the only one. Mm -hmm. yes, uh, yes. Thanks be to God. Yeah. Uh, and again, certainly Bishop Saratelli. Uh, uh, had so much to do with that, Father Manning, and and so and it's the team. I mean, 
uh, it's so important that we we work together as as you say, mm -hmm. Brian. Uh, that those, that collaborative effort that, uh, uh, that even in the synod, uh, I think our Holy Father liked in in the Spanish uh, part saying co responsibility that right responsibility that um, that we walk that journey together and as Maria says we don't plan for the people but we plan with, with the, people. the people right yeah mm -hmm. right right yes. right amen right uh, so um, we uh, are grateful for uh, your role Maria your leadership Thank and uh, on a regional level and I think on the national level also yes, right yes, yes. Uh, and I'm very happy to share this because this is the first time that our diocese is the voice of the region. Uh, we, Like I say before, Region uh, 3 is Pennsylvania and New Jersey. New Jersey and Pennsylvania. And right. also, yeah. as the voice of the region, we I personally had the opportunity to work with uh, different uh, organizations at the national level and to bring the message not only to the region, but also to share what we do in the Diocese of Patterson. They are amazed to see that we have that particular program. And mm -hmm. I belong to a group of, uh, in one of the organizations, it's the National Catholic Association of Director of Hispanic Ministry. They have a team, which is the, called the formation team, and I am part of the team. And this idea is being uh, analyzed by the, the board to see if we can copy exactly what we do in the Diocese of Patterson at the national level, mm -hmm. along with other universities. The Notre Dame wants to do the University of Miami. Uh, they want to be part of, you know, the formation. And this model is probably going to be used in the future for We're that. Even though with the, yesterday I have a meeting with, uh, with the board and the bishops, the USCCB, as our organization to create a program to plan all the pastoral strategies mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. what we do here is really uh is, is good like you say is really really good and we're happy to share right so we are happy yeah, to share yeah. absolutely we have a lot of uh room for improvement but we're on a very good track right, right. Yes, right. yes. We're very, I think we're very proud of, of what we're doing uh may I I hope this isn't a change of subject but when you were a pastor you you were a pastor of a parish that was primarily English speaking. No, and and but but well, it was once primarily yes, English. Speaking. Uh, yes, yes, and, yes. And then a Spanish speaking conglomerate started like coming, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And and you were dealing with basically at at a parish level what's happening in our diocese as a whole right now. Is that true? Yes, to a, yes, yes. Uh, a few pastors before me had dealt with that even more. Oh, so I see. Okay. Because uh, in in the neighborhood I was in in Sunset Park in Brooklyn, but it was wonderful to see uh, there were uh, people from Puerto Rico who had been in that parish, you know, maybe 30 years, but they had come and they were the first ones. Okay. Actually, an uh, uh, auxiliary bishop in uh, in Brooklyn, uh, amongst uh, bishops Octavio Cisneros, he's retired now, but uh, he was that was actually his first assignment, and uh, uh, he was there when the Spanish mass started. I think in the I want to say in the eighties, and mm -hmm. uh, then the next group that came to that neighborhood or community was uh, from the Dominican Republic. Uh, so uh, actually, um, was wonderful in the parish that uh, in. Um, in uh, no November, we would celebrate Our Lady of Providencia, yeah. our, our Lady of Providence, okay. the patroness of Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. In December, uh, because after the Dominican community, the largest community then in, in my time there was the Mexican community. So uh, there would even, nice. and for each of the uh, these feasts, there would be a nine days novena of the rosary and other activities in prepare, preparing for the big feast day and, and big feast day mass. Uh, so uh, Our Lady of Providence in November, Our Lady of Guadalupe in December, and then Our Lady of Alta Gracia, uh, the, the patroness of the Dominican Republic. So, uh, so it was wonderful. And 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 sometimes I think it's been said, but uh, you know, when we think of the Hispanic community, yes, there's a, a common language, but there's so many different countries and cultures. They're not uh, everybody's not the same. And so, uh, but uh, it was. I was at the cathedral last night uh, for the mass, and Monsignor Gino mentioned uh, it wasn't only the Mexican community at the community at, at 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 the mass for Guadalupe. It was the parish community with. People People from Peru and Peru, Colombia yeah, and yeah. all and many different countries, Dominican Republic, and uh, but all there celebrating together, and that was my experience as a pastor. One of the great blessings was really to see that, and the parish council would each of those groups would be represented, and and when one group was celebrating, 
all the groups were there uh, in solidarity. Uh, um, so uh, I hope that uh, there's, the, and I believe there is, you're right, Brian, s- similarity in what's mm-hmm. been happening on a national level. Uh, it was yeah. for me in, as a pastor in Brooklyn and now as a bishop here in the diocese to see um, how how that, uh, we walked that journey together as, as, as um, brothers and sisters in the faith and, and, uh, and we can, you know, uh, ha- speak different languages but we can find a way to communicate and, and share what we have and realize that we have a lot to share with one another i gotta ask one more question yes. i know sorry so uh where you're you're irish so how did you get so good at spanish like was, <laughs> was it when you were made pastor of that parish you felt the need or uh, no it started when i was in the seminary um, okay so um uh and and really the answer to the question is with god's help because mm. <laughs> i took two spanish classes in college and didn't do too well i took french in high school but <laughs> oh, wow. it's, i okay. always say it's the people of god the uh when i went to the seminary and to a uh, pastoral year between my second and third year of theology that was my first experience poco a poco they taught poco me a little, little by <laughs> little, little, by little, little, little right? yes. so that was uh 1994 95 and really it was working at it my first assignment was one mass in spanish on the weekend and five in english my second parish was 11 masses on the weekend and eight in Spanish. And that was uh, a, a very um, uh, largely Hispanic community. And then I served as vocation director and used it uh, Spanish. But um, So then, you weren't just learning Spanish. You were working really hard. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a lot of masses. Uh, well, well, there were a few <laughs> you, priests. You learned your work ethic. Yeah, okay. All right. Uh, it be, uh, it, it's, it's been a great blessing for me to... Um, and when I, one of the times I went to Dominican Republic to study Spanish, there was a wonderful bishop, Bishop Camilo of La Vega. Um, he introduced me after mass and i said something you know i'm here i'm just i said a few <laughs> words i said i'm here to I learn to learn the language story. um i said i'm here to learn the language you know to study the, the language and after the uh, mass and the sacristy he said you know that was great he said that was really good he said but when you say you're here to study language don't say you're here to study language say you're here to get to know the people and to get to know the culture um and uh and learning the language is one thing knowing uh, learning about another culture and people is is another thing and it's mm-hmm. um you said you had an experience in nicaragua with the noche de velitas yeah so so in nicaragua they call it uh, the purissima purissima the, 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 oh yeah the purissima, purissima, purissima yeah. <laughs> ave yeah. Maria, ave, there's a beautiful phrase ave maria purissima, purissima sin, sin pecado pe- concebida um so in in uh the song there that everybody knows is to gloria to gloria gozosos este dia O Duce Maria publica mi voz. Wow. wow. And uh, and they sing that for uh, for a whole night. They don't go to sleep. And uh, it's it's the end of a novena. So right. they, it's a right. 9-day right. celebration right. and right. the whole country shuts down. The schools are closed and uh, I mean there's a lot of tough things going on in Nicaragua right now. At the right moment, now, God, we pray for them. It they, is a um, very yeah, faithful right, country. Right, oh right, my gosh. Right. The, the, and the church is being persecuted right now. I know. I know the, the the level of devotion of the people is is hard for an American to understand. You just have to be right, there to understand. Right, but right. the the uh, some families host and and strangers just come through the house and and there's music and you give out treats and uh, and then and then maybe you you'll shut down for an hour and do the same thing. Go visit other right, people's houses. Right. So basically, everybody from your town is in each other's houses. Yep. And and it's a, it's an incredible festival, food, lights, music. No one's sleeping, fireworks. Right. Yeah, Very exciting. Is, right. I know, right. I know, Rambana. I don't know if you ever had the opportunity to uh, read a book called The Gospel of Solentinami. Mm-mm. Solentinami is are in small little islands in the Lake of Nicaragua, and when the problem started with the persecution of the of the mm-hmm. faith in mm-hmm. Nicaragua, it started many people to preserve the faith. They move to the little island, wow. and if you visit, wow. I w- had the opportunity to to visit that. When you visit the little island, you see the small houses painted in, uh, like uh, they were churches. They painted with different colors. Be- people want to worship there mm. and to protect their faith there. It's a beautiful. Um, you should read. I don't remember the author of that. Uh, We'll get it. We'll get it. Yeah, I'm interested too. The I haven't Gospel heard of Solentina. Yeah. Wow. It's a beautiful. Wow. Uh, wow. It's a beautiful uh, testimony of how you preserve the faith. And even now, you know, Nicaragua has a lot of problems, okay. uh, especially the persecution yeah, and all right. that. But uh, it is something is very inspiring. Mm-hmm. And going back to what you say, Bishop, about uh, what the, the Bishop in uh, Dominican right, Republic right. told you, um, I think it's important uh, that we. When we do pastoral ministry for um, 
pastor for Hispanic ministry that is not only about the language. And I think you heard me saying that a couple of times. Mm. It's not to know the language. You need to know the culture because it's the only way that you can identify with the needs. And I believe mm. you had, when you do pastoral work, you had to find the people where they are. And, and know about their experience. They're and about their, history, their experience right, right, and, right. Uh, and uh, honor their tradition. And this is the way that we enrich ourselves. That's right. That's you right. know, when I came to this country, my Paris was San Antonio Padre. I think I mentioned that before. And what I got out of that community that has all kind of cultures was to know about a Lady of Providence. Uh, I knew about Lady Our Lady of Guadalupe, but I never knew, you know, what... Everything and, about and it. And Simbanga B. Simbanga B. Right, you know, the Filipino tradition. Brothers, right? The That's Sabulon, a great example, right? The Sabulon tradition, right. which is uh, Easter, uh, the Easter Sunday, the Our Lady of, uh, uh, you know, from... Um, from Argentina, from right, Colombia. Right. Well, Somebody mentioned to me uh, today that uh, there's apparently a custom in maybe Sicily uh, on the feast of St. Lucy to make rice balls. Uh, so, the rice right? balls, exactly. <laughs> I support it's that. not just like yeah, this culture. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and then you learn not only not only about the tradition, but the food. There we go. I mean, That's there and the music, go. right, right. <laughs> So All the important things. Uh, yes. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, Maria. And I think we can have a part two. We can come back and uh, and, and 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 continue some of these conversations. But uh, I want to be conscious of time. Yeah, and uh, we have thank to you, have Brian. A Father Duvernay. That, yes, and yes, Jay, yes. And Father Yo. Who's and, on uh, uh, jury, jury, jury duty. Doing his <laughs> civic duty. Uh, yes, yes. Um, great. May I just uh, plug the DMA quickly? So. In the Diocese of Patterson, we're conduct conducting the Diocesan Ministries Appeal, which supports very important things, including Catholic charities, seminary and formation, Catholic urban education, the health care of our senior priests, and many more things. So please consider supporting that. And you've it's been very generous. No, people have been great. And we still, yes, it's not too late, exactly. So the way to do that would be, would be to visit 2023appeal.org. And we just want to thank the audience for listening today, spending time with us. Join us for the next episode of Beyond the Beacon. Please subscribe, give us a positive rating, and consider writing a review. Email questions and podcast topics to the bishop to beyond at pattersondiocese.org. Thank you for joining us. We're on Facebook and Instagram, Beyond the Beacon. Please uh, follow us. Thank you, Maria, for being with Thank us. You, Thank you, Brighton, for Thank you, Brian, for sitting in. And uh, uh, Jay, thanks you as well. And uh, so uh, we'll uh, look forward to having him back. And uh, But great being here at St. Paul's. And uh, thanks for the conversation. Thank you for Thank the you, opportunity. Bishop. Thanks. God bless.